Okay, welcome to On the Right Track. Um, hope everybody's doing well on this Tuesday. Thanks for joining in uh, with us on today. We really appreciate your participation. Um, missed you guys last Thursday. Wasn't feeling so well, so uh, still recouping. But uh, glad to be on uh, today with you uh, as we uh, actually are getting very close to the end of our six weeks. So we we have uh, this week and then next week we'll jump into social media and stuff uh, and that may carry over to the last week but then also we want to do uh, some pitches so we'd like for you to uh, do a professional pitch with us and uh, so next week or th this week we're going to share a pitch sheet with you uh, that might help you to do a pitch, but we want you to do a pitch uh, with the class. Um, so we're looking forward to that. That'll happen in our last uh, week session. Also, um, hopefully you guys, and I'm going to share my screen so that um, you can see the portal. So hopefully you have gotten um, some information um let's see hold on a second you've gotten my email so i shot out an email today and uh that email pretty much uh kind of shared with you uh the information related to the service scholarship so i wanted to kind of go over that with you as well but then also information uh on um just some things just to remind you the importance of actually uh, doing the um, helping us and getting some things done um, with uh, finishing up. Uh, and so the content library uh, also, uh, we added some things. Uh, make sure that you're utilizing our platform to pull documents and that kind of thing and then also sharing those documents with us some of the things were not homework assignments but then some were so make sure you go into the objective portal and look to see if there was a homework assignment or if it was just information um, so basically we're in this section here with the financial terminology um, so ray has been sharing case studies and information related to these topics. Uh, so we're uh, kind of finishing up uh, in that area. Um, and then also uh, we have, uh, I added financial forecasting PowerPoint. So uh, if not the next, uh, Thursday, we'll probably touch in, touch a little bit on financial forecasting. So there's a PowerPoint if you'd like to look at it first. Uh, that we're going to review uh, talking about how to uh, forecast your finances, okay, and do some financial forecasting. So uh, just want to make sure you guys are kind of following along, uh, making sure that you're doing some one-on-one -on -one advising to help you through. And then also, let's make sure we're going into live plan. And like I said, if you have an existing business plan, and just kind of want to copy and paste and put the information in there, that's fine. Uh, because as we look at it, then we'll kind of give you some pointers or give you some suggestions and that kind of thing. So if you don't want to type the whole thing over, that's fine. Just take your existing document and copy and paste it into live plan so we can work from there. So uh, please make sure you're doing that. I have stated in the email, uh, the reason why we can keep this free and the software is free uh, is because of uh, the SBDC that they're actually paying for it. So, of course, they're asking us reports. How is everybody doing? What's going on? That kind of thing. So that's the reason why we ask you to do assignments and reporting and that kind of thing, because we report back to the, them. Believe it or not, like this platform we're on, uh, it's into the thousands of dollars. <laughs> so the SBDC actually paid for us to be on this platform and it's not cheap. 
And the same thing is with live plan. Uh, actually, when you do a group uh, program or plan with um, live plan, it, it's a couple of thousand. Okay. So that's the reason why we're asking you to go in, uh, try to do the worksheets and submit those because then that's proof and evidence that we actually have participants and they're participating. Uh, it might not completely be done, but that's fine. Just submitting them because then when we do our reporting, we can say, yeah, we had a class, we had an active class, they worked on some assignments, we're helping them to pivot. It might not happen overnight, but we're helping them to get that done, okay? So that's the reason why we're constantly asking you to do whatever assignments, work on do worksheets submit them to us that kind of thing so that uh, we're able to report back that uh, we executed um, on the right track we had participants in on the right track yeah there may be some challenges with our businesses but still um, we're helping them through that process so we want to be able to report that information back to the sbdc so that when other funding comes up, we can uh, promote that as particularly funding that could probably go directly to you. So we want to be on the side of there's a need, there's a need, there's a need, there's a need, so that we can advocate, okay, instead of a service scholarship now, can we actually get give dollars out, you know? And so that's where we want to fall into that place that we have a strong voice, so that the SBDC knows that we're doing a lot of work and that we have our clients that are in need of particular things and that we can then advocate for that. So just wanted to share that information when you see my email saying, don't forget to do your homework, don't forget to do your assignments, don't forget, that's the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm say, stating that. Now, the other thing is the content library we're always updating that and um, get putting information in there. And I actually put in uh, some information that I think will be very important for you uh, to see, although it's called uh, Tamora Hughes Content Library is actually, I, I forgot to change the name, but make sure you look at this. I kind of posted it this. Google, we're a Google partner and Google is actually um, doing an event on October 14th um, and it, it, they're actually it's called sell online this holiday season with e-commerce tools so I encourage you to actually register for this um, because especially if you're looking at the holiday season you want to sell online they're going to give some great tips on how to do that how to grow a store online and that kind of thing so uh, we just posted that out there for you uh, if you want more information then please uh, <clears throat> let me know um, because we can uh, send this information to you so that you can uh, register okay um, so i just wanted to share that and then the last thing is the uh, service scholarships uh, so uh, we I actually sent out a PowerPoint. So you can look at the PowerPoint and how it's explained. So in our the service scholarships that we have uh, available, there will be uh, different types of scholarships that will be available. You saw the dollar amounts of how much you can utilize. Uh, from the first cohort, we actually, everybody didn't do the scholarship. So we we're actually able to give a little bit more money than what we stated. Uh, so please keep that in mind that that's the base rate uh, with our consultant, but uh, there's a potential uh, based upon how many people apply for the service scholarships uh, that we might be able to add a little bit more money uh, uh, to that, to the expenses. So um, I'm gonna stop talking now and I'm going to uh, let Ray take over from here. I'm going to pull up his document and uh, we can go from there. Okay. Are you there, Ray?
You're on mute. Okay. I think he's having, Ray's having uh, some volume, so he's calling on his phone. Because <laughs> I can't hear you. Rhea, does your mic work? You're on mute. Yes, it does. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, Ray. Uh, can you hear me okay this way? Uh, I think there's an echo. Um, do you have your volume off on your computer? On your computer, do you have your volume off? Let me know. Yeah, I, but it's an echo because you're on. So there's a bounce back. So your computers, the volume is up on your computer. I turned the volume off. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You can hear me now? Okay. Does that mean everyone else can hear me? I hope. Um, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. All right. So, well, one. Sorry for the confusion. Uh, when I when I got on the Zoom, it told me to. It said that there was some problem with my microphone, and I then I rebooted and got back in, and it didn't say anything was wrong. So there must be something wrong with my microphone. I don't know what it is. Uh, but let's see if we can make this work. Um, so. Last week we talked. We had a case study discussion and we talked about Martha in her daycare center and how she went from kind of a base into an option to expand. Okay, and so what's important with respect to pivoting out of where you're at to get to a better place is having having a solid understanding of your base. Okay, because your base, in essence, is is the here and now reality, okay? And you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're understanding where you are clearly in the here and now so that you, you are taking strategies that are going to work as opposed to thinking that you're you're not in the here and now, I'm, I'm still okay, I don't have a problem. And you want to make sure that you completely understand where you are in the here and now so that as you start looking for pivot points to improve your situation, you'll get traction. Okay. So in our discussion um, last time with respect to Martha and her daycare center, 
we went through some expansion opportunities that were available, you know, from buying out another daycare center and, and uh, getting a larger facility and then hiring staff and all, all of those factors. And then we answered some questions uh, about that about that um, study and, and, and kind of went on to what we would do today. And today we have another case study. Uh, and, and so and it's on the, it's on your it's on your screen now. I'm trying to get back to get back to it. Here it is. Um, now this. The, the, the base for this is really a barbecue business, okay? That's what this is about today. And so what we wanted to understand right off the bat is what is the proof of concept for this business? And, and so we looked in terms of what the business's performance was in a pop-up store that was in, in last year, in 2019, okay? And the pop-up store did very well, all things considered. This was a kind of a seasonal thing. The chef that, 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 that ran the, the, the barbecue uh, pop-up store, you know, had 20 years of experience. And, and she um, uh, had been doing kind of off and on special events and, and catering for the most part, uh, as well as some restaurant work. But the last couple of years, she's been involved in, in, in doing pop-ups on a seasonal basis. And this last, in the summer of, of 2019, it worked out really well. And so we wanted to give a sense of what was going on with respect to that base that gives us confidence in terms of the, the, the real strategies to pivot and expand, okay? So the first page of, of this, uh, and you all can... I think this was just got on today, um, this, this case study about the barbecue business, but we all can, can get this off, off the platform and, and read it more carefully. But I'm just going to go through some of the basic factors that are in, in, involved in, in this case study so that you can get a sense of, of really the strategy. Because the strategy is, is to start with the here and now, start with the base, so that you know where you're coming from, and then you can take approaches to, to, to make a pathway to, to something that, that's going to get you back in, in, in positive momentum, okay? Now, as you can see on, on the first page of, of, of this uh, uh, case study, there's a listing of, of menu items, okay? And, and so this is, what, this is what the prices were for those menu items. And you can see that uh, in the, the middle column is what, what the ingredients uh, and some of the costs related to making that, that menu item. Okay, so, so the rib tips, you know, per cost $2 to make, and so the gross margin is, is six fifty. okay? And so it, it, everything seems to be pretty consistent with respect to the margin, if you notice. The margin is kind of hovering you know, around 75%, all things being what they are. And that, that's, a pretty good, that's a pretty good margin, okay? Um, and, and, and so that, that, that's good news. And then we look at what other expenses that the chefs had at, at this, uh, at this, at this pop-up. And it really wasn't very much, okay? Because she had a, um, a big, uh, if you will, big trailer uh, there was a smoker barbecue barbecue grill, okay, and so she would pull that up to the to the pop up every day, and, and in fact, she had the, she had the coals and everything else related to that to that that big trailer smoking by the time she got got to the pop up, so she was she was ready to, to go as soon as she got there, um, and 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 as a, as a result. The only real variable cost was, was labor. She had someone help her on a part-time basis. And she had several people help her. Um, there's certain rules of the rule with respect to running a business. If you pay someone more than $500 a year, you have to, you have to give them a, a tax statement, even though they're contract workers, okay? Well, 
uh, Miss Jeff had a lot of friends, and no one made throw hundred dollars, so she didn't have to give out any 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 statements to the IRS on anybody. But the point is that she had people help her every day, different people help her every day, and she paid them fifty dollars for for their help, and, and that was it. And then the other thing that she she did was she she had special wood pellets and hickory that she put in with the, with the charcoal for the smoking purposes of how the food she prepared. The other fixed cost associated with what what uh, went on at this pop up was that there was a five hundred dollar rental on the pop up every month. Okay, and then she had to get uh, liability insurance, which she did on a monthly basis, so it was eighty dollars a month. It's not that expensive on a yearly basis, but it, it, so it's a little, this is kind of high. Uh, and you can see when she did this in 2019, there 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 was some trouble with respect to the weather and the condition of the pop up. So she didn't have to pay rent for a, for a couple months. So let's go on to the next page. The next page tells us that um, you know she had. Uh, I, I think 49 days of activities, um, and, uh, and and so 48 days, excuse me, 48 days of activities. So between June and and October, she wasn't there every day. She wasn't there on weekends. Okay, and if, if the weather was was terrible, she did she didn't she didn't she didn't uh, go out to, to either. So, but on the basis of what she did. She kept she kept some records, not great records, but she kept some records. She knew what she made on the days that she was open. Okay, she didn't know exactly what she sold on those days, but we have a sense on knowing what her margins were. Her margins were consistent; they were around seventy five percent. Okay, so we didn't have to. We we we, we knew what her cost of goods sold, sold were, her cost of ingredients were, because we knew how much. Her margin was. Her margin was 75% on what she sold. So we knew that her cost of ingredients on the sale she made on those on those 48 days of $15,000, we know her cost of ingredients had to be $3,700. $3, okay? And then we knew what the gross margin was as a result of that. You subtract the cost of ingredients from, from the sales, and that's your gross margin. And then she had variable costs. The variable costs, you know, weren't that much. They were, they were, there were pop-up you know, fees, and there were there were insurance, and and um, uh, then of course there there was um, salaries. Okay, she paid someone fifty dollars a day for the forty-eight days, and, and and so forth and so on. So so that was it. So at the end of the end of the period for those for those months, and granted this was from this is from uh, June to through October. Uh, for those four four months, she made close to six thousand dollars. Okay, that's her money. And so, and, and the other thing that was useful about the here and now, if, if you will, uh, proof of concept. People really like her food. They like her price points. They like her food. And 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 you know, so on the basis of of you know people buying food from her, if you took in. The number of people she had each day, which was around 25 average, she, you know, she made, uh, she had sales of almost 12 and a half dollars. Okay. I mean, not everyone came in there with 12 and a half dollars, but some people, you know, brought dinner home for the family and some people just got a sandwich. Okay. But I'm saying on the average was, was 12 and a half dollars. And for the, the menu that she's got, it ain't bad for customer. Okay. So that that's all good news. So that that that's kind of, if you will, is the foundation. Okay, and and you know we go to the next page, and you're going to see on the next page, okay, some 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 narrative in terms of a, a, a expansion proposal. Okay, and there's things that are relevant here with with respect to what happened and what happened in 2020. Okay, in 2020. Um, you know, COVID hit, and there was no opportunity for for uh, catering events because of, because you know there was no you, you couldn't cook for events. Okay, you couldn't have people a lot of people you cooked for, and there was there was no opportunity to lease any pop up stores. 
So, so uh, there are some, some, some smaller. Uh, there were some days where uh, the, the, this chef was able to, to, you know, take her, take her trailer and and, and, and set up shop on uh, on different locations, but nothing very consistent. So the idea was let's consider let's consider opening a restaurant at the CTA terminal subway station. Okay. This, the CTA terminal sub, uh, uh, station is at 63rd and Halstead. It's the green line, okay? And and so um, we looked, at some, looked into some data, okay? And the CTA keeps data. In, in 2019, on a, on, a, on a daily basis, this is weekday basis, there was 425 pass, passengers that, that the, the traffic that went through that station, okay? It's 425 people every day. Uh, and, and then the other thing is, this, uh, this station, if you will, is right in the middle of Kennedy King. Okay, and they've got 5,000 students. You know this area, you know that it's kind of a food desert. There's not a lot of options for, for people to get reasonable priced food uh, in that area. Um, so that was kind of, if you will, the background with respect to why we wanted to consider opening a restaurant on this space. Because the restaurant there has been vacant for a number of years. And, and so let's look into it. Okay. So there's some other elements that came into, you know, consideration. And that is that obviously um, you're going to need to expand your menu, okay? Because it's not just barbecue people want. People want to have breakfast food and, and snacks and, and something quick they can grab and, and, and get on get on the get on the, the, the subway and go go where they need to go. Um, but uh, so there, we, the menu was expanded for that purpose, uh, and cost factors were interrelated for that purpose, so we could understand that as we understand the other costs associated with this potential expansion. Um, so uh, there were some other attractive things that were kind of side, kind of like side hustle factors, okay? The side hustle factors were this, okay? This kitchen uh, that's in the, in, inside, of, inside of the terminal has a walk-in freezer and a walk-in refrigerator. It's got a big, big oven hood, okay? So there's stuff you have to buy, but there's stuff there that, that that's attractive. It's attractive for beyond using it for your own purposes. You could use this space as, as a shared kitchen when you're not using it. Okay, and there's re there's revenue potential with respect to that. Also, this is a pretty good size space. It's twelve thousand. It's, it's twelve hundred square feet. So there's plenty of space uh, because you can't have a lot of people sitting there anyway in these times. But but even so. You know, there, there's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of of, 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 of of there's a lot of open space in the space that's there. And you could use that for for, for seasonal pop up events. So that's another potential revenue. So the other thing that that's that's kind of cool in some respects is that the traffic, passenger traffic on the weekends, is not worth staying open for. It's really low on the weekends. So, so the, the strategy would be that you'd only have the restaurant open from Monday to Friday from 6 to 6.30, uh, 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. And then this would leave the chef uh, available to do weekend events, and she could do catering on, on weekends, okay? So these are just options, okay? So the, high, the idea is think about, okay, what, what can we get off the source element of the restaurant and then what kinds of adjunct things are available to kind of make sure that if something goes wrong, we have other well, other things going for us other than just make or break at the restaurant, okay? Uh, so that's kind of where we were with respect to, if you will, the logic for the expansion. And now we're going to go on to some data. Um, so there's, there's a startup cost. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going from the here and now to the expansion. And so you need licenses. Uh, if you're going to use it as a shared kitchen, you've got to get a shared kitchen license. 
If you want to do pop ups, you got to get a pop up license. We obviously need a business license. So there's liability insurance. You know that that's you know that's eight hundred dollars a year. There's you know you, you're you need some you're going to need some 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 legal assistance with respect to contents. We can get that free from the law project. Then you need some equipment. You need you need a security system, and we think we can get a grant to cover that. You need a stove. And we're not asking for you know a, a ten thousand dollar stove. But we're looking for something that would would get the job done. If there's a huge, if there's a huge, uh, if you will, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? When you got that that big that big that big uh, canopy over you to, to suck out the air. Uh, uh, it's an Ansel system. Say that again. It's an Ansel system. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so that's there already. Okay, so so you need some cooking utensils, utensils, rubber mats. She's got to paint the place. She's got to, and she's gonna need some paint and brushes. Do that. She's got family members that'll do that. She needs a pay system, and she needs she needs a, a, a AT and T, uh, uh, if, if you will, uh, order ordering subscription service. She needs some other things. They're all listed there cleaning supplies, and then she needs a start of food inventory. That's $2,000, okay? So that's that's getting you up to $10,000 of, of, of startup costs, okay? Uh, the uh, that, that, that doesn't present a problem with respect to the cash capacity of, of, of the chefs. Okay, that, that, can, that can be handled. Um, now we come to the menu, the breakfast kind of food menu. And there it is. You know, uh, I think we all knew intuitively it doesn't cost it doesn't cost a dollar fifty to make uh, to, to, to make a two dollar cup of coffee. You know, it costs thirty cents to make a cup of coffee. And so you, you can hear you can see the the, 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 the the menu factors, and you can see the selling price, and you can see the cost factors related to it. All right, and you can see again. Going through the gross margin for these things, they're up there again. The average is right around, pretty much around 75%. Uh, that's just the way it is. Now, now there's other there's other opportunities of income too. We, we talked about the top, we talked about the shared kitchen revenue. It potentially might be $500 a month, and then the uh, pop up events uh, that would be done on a seasonal basis. And that's, that's $200 a month on the average. And then we're going to go to some of the some of the other costs, labor costs. Uh, they'll need someone 12 hours a day. Okay, and it'll, it'll be it, it, this is going to be a, a, a kind of place where you're going to have busy times. Okay, you're, you're going to have quiet times and you're going to have busy times, but you're going to have real quiet times and you're going to have real, real, real busy times. And so you need to have staff that can fulfill that need. And, and the chef does. She's got people who are, are 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 very qualified to do the work, and they're willing to do the work on that basis. Okay, but it's, it's going to be it's going to be in addition to the chef is going to need twelve hours of of, of staff, and, and that pay will be fifteen dollars, and that'll be con that'll be contract pay, but fifteen dollars an hour, which is which is I think a, a fair a fair pay for the work, and because this is. Because you got to remember, this is not going to be sit around and, and wait for. If, in other words, people don't have to be there all the time, but they need to be there when it's busy. And, and, and so, when they're when they're there, they're going to be working hard. So we want to make sure that they're comp compensated accordingly. Uh, there's a, there's a, a liability insurance um, on a monthly basis that would be about sixty dollars. An annual business license. Uh, we've already talked about that in startup costs. Uh, to other licenses, uh, legal accounting. This is really accounting, eight hundred dollars accounting. You need to make sure unless unless you unless you want to tackle QuickBooks by yourself, you need some help with with the accounting and the bookkeeping. The monthly lease is eleven hundred dollars, and then uh, the other costs. Uh, I think we had some of those costs in the start startup costs. So. So when you say when you when you do startup costs, some 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 of these things will actually be assets, and some of these things will actually be expenses. Okay, but 
you know, the startup cost tells you what do I need to put out to get myself ready to open the doors and, and do business. So that ten thousand dollars is an estimate of that, and then these other things that I kind of pointed out as being revenue factors or or, or expense factors, they you are know, what they are based upon engaging the business. Um, so on the basis of <clears throat> looking at what the chef had just doing the pop up, that was twenty five people a day, okay, uh, and, and 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 that wasn't every day. Okay, this is going to be every day, uh, and, and and so that that's one factor that you can kind of put in the back of your mind. The other factor is that you got 425 people walking through the turnstiles every day. Okay, how many people are going to be stopping by to get a cup of coffee or stopping by on the way home to bring home food to the family? Okay, consider consider those consider those things. So on the basis of of those factors without consideration of, of, of the shared kitchen or the other things, uh, the sales for food would be $13,715 on a monthly basis. That would be 25 people spending $5 and um, let me get to it. Yeah, 25 people, 25 people spending five dollars that might be your breakfast crowd and then you got 40 people spending thirteen dollars okay 65 people a day that's what that's that's what gets you thirteen thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars all right and and uh then you know we got our cost of labor which we talked about and and then then the, the fixed costs and so forth and so on get down to monthly net income before taxes of forty five hundred dollars and monthly taxes of 600 uh, or taxes on the basis of that taxes are in terms of small business taxes they're around 13 percent okay uh you know you can work it's not quite precise but it, it's, it's it's a good enough number you can rely upon it for, for projection purposes so the net income is four thousand dollars a month okay that would be the chef's money Okay, so you're figuring on an ongoing basis she's going to be taking she's going to be taking draws through the year, but but in, in essence you've got a cushion there, you got a four thousand dollar cushion above break even. That's good, okay, and I I you know we could we could talk all day long about the number of people that are going to be purchasing and so forth and so on, but that's why you want to have these other options. To, to enable you to overcome maybe some momentum factors that are out there. And plus COVID's still here, right? Still here. So we have to think about think about that. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, I just wanted to, to, to go through one one thing um, that might help give some perspective. I didn't get I I just I I, I didn't have, as I said before, there wasn't data on what actually bought there's data on how much money they spent but there's not data on how much and on what they specifically do. so i'd like to i'd like to fine tune that a bit before i put this on live plan okay because i need to know what what how many not just how much money is coming in i need to know what's selling and what's not selling so i need i need to talk to the chef about that so we can do a better job with that estimate the money's good enough you know, for projection purposes, but you know, we're running a business here. We don't want to have a lot of stuff spoiling, uh, obviously. Okay, so here we are, um, and we're, we, we we can see that there, there's some there's some possibilities here for something to be positive, but um, you know, there could be some things that aren't aren't so positive that could come and bite us. And so we need to think about those things. And, and not, you know, not just, we, we need to pay attention to those things, we'll put it that way, okay? So, um, so I said 425 people a day, right, walking through the turnstiles. It's 425 people walking through the turnstiles in, in, in these days, in the COVID days. I, I, I don't really know. 
I, I need to get some clarity with respect to that. Okay, I mean, I, I think you can see when you when you do projections, you need to think about okay, what what other things might I might I might not have accurate numbers on here. If I'm, I'm putting numbers on here for that we think makes sense, the statistics make sense, but you know. The COVID can distort things as well, so we need to be aware of that. Okay, um, you know, the, the Kennedy King still has five thousand students right now. Are, are they all? Are they all virtual? If they're all virtual. They're not going to be. They're not going to be. You know, uh, being around the campus. So that might be. That might be a factor. But you know, the, the other thing that I, I think makes me feel comfortable about this is that the chef is very talented as one the food is very good as two and the other thing is is that um you know she will have the opportunity once things shake loose a little bit to have weekends to do other things like catering which she's successful at doing and, and doing events which she's successful at doing so so that that's kind of the totality of, of this i, I wanted to to go to one other thing before we have a little more I, I should have I should, maybe I should stop before I do something else. Maybe I should stop and ask if there's any questions on what we've talked about thus far. Go ahead, Rodney. Oh my um so my business is, is two parts. It's um it's the product and service, but it's more service right now. So um I've got to start look, figuring out because I'm doing more service because I'm, I'm not really selling records and music right now. That'll probably be January. So I'm more service. So I don't have the unit type thing going on. So I need, and then I'm home base. So I don't have a lot of expenses. So I need to kind of translate this um, case study, figure out what my costs are. They're, they're not a lot, uh, but I want to be able to come up with these types of numbers and formulas. Um, but since I'm not like product based like that, um, yeah. Yeah. that's what I'm working on, right? I don't want, I don't want to, I did, did, I, did I interrupt you? Rodney, did I interrupt you? No, not at all. Okay, Rodney, I, I, I think what you're talking about is that what, 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 let's look at this from a service perspective rather than a sales perspective, okay? So the service perspective, it it it's it kind of gets back to what Tamara said a couple a couple maybe a couple a week or so ago when she talked about okay we're in a different world now okay so events are not live events are virtual and and the production associated with doing an event is is it, it, it's mind boggling okay and 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 so. I think there's a lot of people that want to do events that aren't doing them because they don't have the production skills to pull it off. Mm -hmm. And Tamara is nodding her head. So maybe Tamara, do you, you could add to, to what I'm, I'm saying. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, and yeah, I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago to figure if you provide service. So like with me, I'm a consultant. I do business planning and grant writing and that kind of stuff. So I apply, I have a service list of how much work costs based upon the number of hours. So I'll charge, it's going to take me 10 hours to do a basic grant. And this is how much I'm charging you. If we go beyond that, then it's additional dollars that get added. Okay. So that's what you would have to do is whatever the basic services. So you know what people are requesting already. So whatever that is, they may be asking you just to do a, a, a kind of like a, what they call it, I, I'm not the music person. So where I need an intro to my video. Uh, so you would come up with the music and the beats or whatever, so that then I can add it to my video. Well, you would apply a dollar amount of how long that would take so maybe it only take you five hours so in order to come up with an intro to for for me to put on my music video 
then how much is that going to cost? So you first look at the dominance of what are people asking for? So if they're asking for that, a friend of mine just did a fundraiser uh, in Tacoma, Washington for cancer survivors and victims. And so basically her, the person, her husband actually is into production and all that. So they put it on YouTube, they had the music, it, they brought it in, the information in and out, because people are doing that. They're doing these kind of like, uh, you know, like with the Emmys and all of that. In order to make everything flow online, there's a music production part of it because they bring in the music, they bring in singers, they bring in, you know, and all, everybody's virtual, but the producer has to piece all this stuff together. And so for you uh, in particular, and then even Wes, what is your product list, your basic one? You know, there might be some extra stuff, uh, but what is your product list? So if there's certain standard things that people are asking for all the time, that's your basic product list. And then if there's some special customized, then those are kind of one off, you know? So like with my fees, uh, I'm, I charge $100 an hour and that's just one off that if you go off my list and it's not on my list of services, then anything else you need, you got to pay me $100 an hour. Okay. So you have to come up with that concept of what's my basics, just like she has rib tips, chicken. These are just basics. These are the things that people ask for. So with yours, it would be, what are my basics as it relates to music? What are my basics as it relates to uh, services that I provide? And from there, a lot, put a dollar amount to it. It might be a little off, but put a dollar amount to it. So if you're doing music production for a video, how much is, is are you actually having to come up with the music, come up with the beats, and all of that to then align to an existing video, how many hours is it gonna take you to do that basic hours? And then anything that exceeds beyond the basic, then you have a standard rate. Like mine is $100 an hour, your rate might be different, but it's like, okay, we can get this done in 10 hours. So here's the basic cost, because now the hours are aligning with your basic. So if you're charging $100 and you're saying this is going to take 10, it kind of balances out so people can figure out where you came up with the dollar amount. And then based upon that, you can kind of figure out or they can figure out, oh, okay, well, normally they charge me $100, but I'm probably getting a discount if I go ahead and do a package deal. So that's how you engage people into getting into packages compared to getting into individual service fees. But that's the same thing you would have to do in projection. Create your list, your service fee sheet. You should have a service fee sheet. I have a service fee sheet, sheet as a consultant. So there's basic stuff. I do grant writing. I do business plan development. I do you know uh, different kind of uh, incorporation. So I have fees for all of those things that people have asked me for. So when I give them the service fee, I say, these are the basics. If you go beyond the 10 hours that I'm allotting or the five hours, then you have to pay $100 an hour additional. If you So going into a contract agreement, everybody knows then how much it's gonna cost to get this job done. So pretty much, you know, if somebody says, um, Rodney West, you know what? I got this video that this guy shot for me, but I have no music to it. And I want something that's upbeat. I want something that's jazzy. I want something that sounds really good. And could you do that? And maybe they show you the video so that then you can look at the video and say, oh, okay, yeah, I can, I can put some beats together. I can put it. Then that's when you would say, it's going to take me so many hours, though to one, come up with the music, and then actually put it together so it fits on that video too, because you gotta be able to have the right equipment so that then they can take it 
take your music and put it on the video. So there's a lot of work involved. So you never want to shortchange yourself, especially as a, a, a service and as a consultant. You want to make sure you including your time. So how much you paying yourself? So like uh, with this person here, she was paying people for labor. So you want to include your labor. So how much would you normally charge if you were the, the employee and not the owner? So I calculate my time as part of my labor. Although is me doing it, you want to make sure you're going to get paid at the end and that you're not just doing this this for free. So you got to include your labor. So this sheet right here could easily be converted to the various services instead of food. It's your services, how much they cost, and then figuring out how much it really takes. So that means with your services, especially with music, you got to include how much of that software you're paying every month. Uh, if you're renting the keyboard, how much that's costing. If you doing any kind of rentals, you got to include all of that information because then that really determines how much it really costs to put this thing together so that you can see what your gross margin is, okay? So easily you could take this same sheet convert it to your service products, how much you normally would charge for them, how much it does it actually take to uh, put this thing together so that you can see what your gross margins are. Because if you cutting it tight and your prices are too low, then that's where you make that adjustment because you may need to come up on your prices a little bit so that then you're not so close uh, to not making any money, but you got to include, if you got to travel, you got to include, if you, you got to pay yourself, or if you got to hire somebody else, you got to include all those costs, uh, in order to really get a, a true number, uh, and to really see if you're making a profit, because if you're doing a lot of stuff and you're not charging enough, then you're going to come up, it, it maybe not even break even but you want to make sure that your gross margin is benefiting you uh, and your company. So hopefully that wasn't too long of a... <laughs> uh, 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 that was perfect. This food uh, case study, you know, and the labor and your comments were perfect. I, there's an um, engineer who travels between here and Chicago, Don Medina. So Don Medina's doing a lot of stuff down in Atlanta now. He splits his time. So he mm -hmm. called me and uh, last week he said, hey, Rodney, there's been a, a, a Don Medina sighting in, in Illinois. And I, we laugh, but guess what's happening? These churches that are doing their live things, you said something. Because we're in the, so churches are having to upgrade their audio and their video. So he's coming in, working with the youngins, you know, hiring them as labor and, and upgrading their video. And he has to look and sound great. So betwixt this case study that Ray put, I think that, that lit it up for me, looking at these numbers of things. I said, how, how can I relate that to services and i hadn't even thought about so i used to have brochures when i was focusing on it services so i need to do another brochure because that lays it out so between you and ray that case study and your examples they just kind of opened it up for me that's what i needed to, so i can get my numbers together mm -hmm. yeah so. yeah and that was the reason why i was having you guys to focus on well who's your target market because your target market may have changed. And definitely, like you mentioned, churches. Oh, definitely, <laughs> churches are recognizing, okay, we're not gonna be open, but how do I keep my congregants engaged? And so this whole Facebook and that kind of thing is fine, but if you, if you wanna jazz it up a little bit, you know, with an intro, so it brings somebody in with some nice music and getting people engaged, 
Uh, I've looked at, and I don't know if you guys know Bishop T.D. Jakes in Texas. He, he does a great job, even to the point he has a YouTube channel. So that's even better than the Facebook. He's on Facebook, but he brings it in. He has the music people and his praise team, but he has the videos, the updates, and he got this music with conferences that are coming up. He's doing conferences. So they got this beat, dun 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 well, they got a producer, somebody that's in music, to come up with this intro to engage people online. And so I know there are churches and there are other nonprofit organizations that are looking for people to pull in the music. That's why movies work well. If you look at a movie, usually the intro, even on a new movie, it has the music first. So it has the music, and even while the movie's playing, there's music, because it's music that's engaging the audience. You don't recognize it, but it's the music and the beats and all of that that keeps my attention. And so that's, that's an audience that you really got to look at because people are virtual. People are now virtual, so you got to figure out where those target audiences are. They might not be the traditional people that you normally reach out to. There's another whole group of people that have never been in this arena that are looking for professionals to help them look better online. And that's where you can make your money. Okay. Very good. Uh, you know, Rodney, uh, Tamara says that she, you know, she's not, not in the expert music, but, but, uh, she, she can sell me, you know. So, anyway, uh, I, I wanted to show the class one other thing. Um, and if you could, if you could go to live plan, uh, if there's, unless there's any other questions, uh, to the live plan, I, I, I'd like I'd like to go to the, the part where you know it, it's got the uh, activities across the top: pitch, plan, forecast. Okay, yeah. where where do you want so me to go? If you could go? If you could go to benchmarks. Okay, if you could put in um, uh, uh, limited service restaurant, if you could type in li limited service restaurant. Um, where do I put that in at? Right, right where it says industry benchmarks, there's this, you've got hardware stores yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This world, yeah, IBIS yeah. world, yeah. IBS in this world, and, and that that'll give you like 24 pages of an industry, okay. Uh, but this is just a one-page thing. It's, it, it's, it, it is what it is, you know. Um, and, and that is that, okay. Um, as an example, gross gross margin for benchmark. And that, that, that's kind of, do you remember the gross margins that in our examples? They were like 75% or so. So I think they came out to 73% exactly. So anyway, the gross margins for, for us would have been 73%, okay? Uh, Oops, all right. Okay, so, and, and then if you go, if you go like for the operating margin, uh, Pretty much, it was, it was like 5% ours, ours, because, you know, they're, they're, um, the, 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 the variable cost in 
the fixed costs are very straightforward for what we're doing. Uh, they're very high. They're 55 percent as opposed to seven percent benchmark. Okay, and net profit margin, you know, three percent. Uh, the net profit margin is is like 33 percent. Okay, huge. You know, so the thing is, it's it, 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 so so you know the thing that the thing that's relevant is, is that you know it's a scale factor for the most part. Okay, like whatever you spend on rent is eight 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 percent, and, and um, let's see revenue. Uh, yeah, we came out about eight percent as well. Uh, uh, monthly revenue per employee fifty three ten. Uh, our revenue, I, I counted the chef as an employee, so so instead of one and a half people, it was two and a half people, and two and a half people into the revenue. Um, was to $5,486. Okay, so we're above the benchmark. Uh, and, 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 and so um, once I get this, all this data loaded into life plan, it'll, 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 pop, it'll populate automatically, okay? But I, I just kind of looked at some of these numbers just to see where we were with respect, respect to benchmark. Because benchmarks are important. They tell you where you are in comparison to the industry in comparison to your competitors. And so you want to know, you know, am I charging, am I, am I charging enough to get the compensation I need? Um, the, 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 these examples that we had today for the, for the barbecue, as well as the projections to the margins for the, for the, the breakfast kind of food, they were, they were very strong margins, uh, more so than I thought. I was kind of surprised actually. Uh, you know, and sometimes you're going to see something that's going to seem, really silly okay like i saw one the other day uh for catering and and the revenue spent on rent was like one percent and i i figured what, what what's going on with that revenue you know, then i then i thought, started to think about it for a bit and came to the conclusion that well yeah the, the catering you know it, it's it, the focus on catering is that there's there's big players in catering okay big caterers in play in, in catering one, they don't have any employees because they, 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 they all they all contract out. Okay, you know it's like a it's like a procurement process with them, and they don't have rent as a result. They they don't have people on staff. In other words, either either the people that are they're procuring for these for these bids, they're doing it at their shared kitchens or whatever, or they're doing it on site at the event. Okay, so they don't have much rental space. But you know, it's, it's sometimes you have to kind of think about why are these numbers the way they are, you know, instead of beating yourself up because my number is high and you think about why is there so low? Uh, because in essence, at the end of the day, we want to have the best data we have, we can have to make a good forecast. So that's why I, I, I keep on preaching, uh, you know, about, you know, you need to know, you need to know the here and now base and you need to understand what your proof of concept is. Because if you don't have a proof of concept, uh, you, you, gotta, you need to not just try to pivot out of what you're doing. You need to quit what you're doing and, 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 and find a path that, that, that can really work for you. But for the most part, what I think we're talking about is that there are pivot opportunities that exist because of COVID. You know, the one that we just talked about with Rodney, that's a big pivot opportunity, you know. We're in a different production world now. Events have, t have turned into virtual production, and, and that, that's an entirely different discipline, okay? And there are not that many Rodneys walking around that they, they have that skill set right now, and it's in demand. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, we need to think about what things th that I am capable of doing, I can do, that are not being fulfilled in the, in the COVID world that we live in right now. So that's what I wanted to leave everyone with today. Um, I, as I said, I, the next couple of days, I'm going to talk more about what the particular things are in this example that actually sell. Uh, other than the, do the dollars, I know. I'm not worried about the dollars, but I want to know what, what, was, what, what are the best sellers and what are not so good sellers so that we don't, we don't, we don't, get, you know, we, we don't get bogged down in averages that we know. Okay. Great, Ray. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Are there any other questions 
uh, before we get off for tonight? Yes, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so in regards uh, of my business, I really, first of all, appreciate the um, barbecue restaurant uh, pop-up because that really is helping me with figuring out my financing because mm -hmm. right now that's what I'm really struggling with in regards to my food serve my food delivery services mm -hmm. because um I do have like the concept I recently put out a survey I currently have about 80 people that um participated in the survey and the um the results are ranging and different like they really are it's um i'm sorry um they are really big and like dining in but since we are in the covid really delivery is the option mm -hmm. and so with my business really getting the financial piece and i don't really have the financing it's kind of finances that is what's really kind of putting me, I guess, I, I'm struggling with the financials because I'm coming out of pocket. I'm the only, I'm not only operating everything, I'm the only worker, like it's just me. So yeah. I'm really trying to figure out my financing and I'm literally starting from the bottom up. You know, I've purchased, I recently purchased all of my containers. I recently did actually one order for a family member. She purchased 10 um, meals for me, but because she traveled, I only produced four for her, but she mm -hmm. prepaid for it. Yep. So um, yeah. that's really yeah. where I'm at when it came to my financing. And also to wanted to add, I'm doing a catering event in November. So okay. it's those pieces that really the financial pieces are really getting to me and kind of like stressing me out because I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's just me and I'm literally starting from the ground up, like where, not saying, well, where am I getting the financials from, but really like, yeah, where am I getting the financials from? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, mm -hmm. Chef Nelly, I, I, I think the, the, the thing that um, mm -hmm. resonated with me when you, you talked was, was that, you know, the pre-orders are, are, are kind of a pathway, okay? Yeah. And it, do you remember, you remember Groupon? Everyone remember Groupon? Yes. Yep. You know, you, you go to a site, you go to the site, and it's a restaurant, and you can, you can get a, a meal at a discount, you, you prepay, and you've got so many months to use it. And if you don't use it, you kind of lose the benefit of the, of the discount. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the net value doesn't change. So, you know, it, it, that, that's how that Groupon deal worked. And, and so it was kind of, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was a working capital, uh, it was a working capital strategy for us to overcome, you know, the, the, the problem you just talked about, Chef Snelly, is that, you know, you need, you need to have, you know, you need to have that inventory built up, and you need to have cash flow. Right. And you know, you can keep you can keep ahead of what you need to buy. Right. Uh, you can keep ahead of what you need to buy if someone's paying you to do that. Yep. Okay. So pre-orders, pre-orders do that for you. Yep. So, right. Right. So I, I I think that that's something that you know uh, we can talk more about. Uh, Tamar and I are working on, on, a, on a strategy for pre-orders yep. that, that has to do with, with the money being put in escrow. Uh, but but uh, I, I think there's other options that we can mm -hmm. consider. Uh, but but you know the biggest thing I believe that's relevant for, for you, Chef Nelly, is just keep on doing what you're doing to kind of prime the pump yep. to get people interested in, in what you do. You know, maybe maybe the thing is by thinking that okay, you got some people lined up. You you having a little event. You, you know, you, you have some some price at the door for a discounted price to get people to sample your food. And, okay. Find uh, out that subscribers. Yeah. You know, and, and, and see if that works. But yep. don't jump ahead of yourself. I mean, do this within your means. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have you don't have to you know put out a thousand dollars for food. You need something on a smaller scale so you can kind of prime the pump and build it up. Yeah, right. But uh, we got to find we got to find other ways, you know, yeah. to overcome 
working capital shortfall uh, yeah. because they, they just don't they just don't go away by themselves. You got to you got to find a solution for them. right. Right. And this is tomorrow. I was just suggesting mm. that the main thing you said was the pre. If you can get people to kind of like pre order, right. particularly, I've been seeing people are getting ready for Thanksgiving. Okay. Yes. And they mm -hmm. have not, the, the whole being thing of not being able to be at the table with everybody and mm -hmm. people flying in and that kind of thing. If you can figure out a way how you can still bring everybody together for Thanksgiving dinner. Right. You know, even to the point that it's a little bit more specialized. So people are paying for it, but they're getting the tablecloths, they're getting the plates, they're getting everything. So I don't have to buy anything because I'm gonna order from you and I'm gonna get my whole Thanksgiving given set up. Okay. Right. That could potentially be, but I would pre-order it. So that means that you figure out how much how much do a person would need to pre-order so that even if things didn't work out, you still got your money, you know? Mm -hmm. So those, those, that's where we talk about pivot, where now in this season, people are trying to figure out what Thanksgiving and Christmas is going to look like. Right. They will be cooking themselves, but now there's not a big group to cook for. How do you manage that or promote hey, don't worry about the cooking. We'll take care of everything. We'll take care of the whole setup. We'll take care of the whole package. But this is what you have to pay up front. That covers then that cost. So you don't have to come out of your pocket. So you never want to come out of your pocket. You want to make sure, that's why it's important to figure out what your gross margin is and all that. So that then whatever service or product you provide, you know that it's getting covered because they're paying for it up front and they're getting and that's how you do promote promos right uh, you know talking about get it this day and get 20 30 40 percent off you know right. that's how you age people that's what amazon does next week is a, one of these amazon days <laughs> it's coming right. up that's actually something that for my business that i'm working I have a lot of ideas that I'm trying to get for like my marketing promotions. I know that Vistaprint has like these promo cards that if you get like 10 orders or whatever, and it's like the stamp or whatever, got to figure out like the percentage of that. So that I am thinking about those means, but I guess like when it, putting my financing on paper. So when I go to live plan, I look and I sit there and I'm like, Okay, how can I necessarily get the numbers that I'm gathering or what is potentially going to happen? Just actually putting that yeah. on paper I, when I, it's not actually I, happening. Yeah. I, I have some suggestions you, you mm -hmm. can consider. Uh, and, and that is that, okay, with respect mm -hmm. to live plan, okay. what I've found is if you can kind of lay things out in a narrative sense, you know, to write them out a little bit or outline them okay. without, without, without putting down a lot of numbers. It's like, 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 the, like the, if you will, the situation analysis that I, I try to portray uh, today, okay? You know, this is the situation. This is, these, are, these are the factors that are relevant here. And, 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 these are the, and then, then you get to the data, you know, that, that supports the things that you're trying to get across, okay? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that, that that's a strategy. And the other thing is uh, find out, take a good look at life plan so you understand what, because in the life plan, the spreadsheets are all interrelated, okay, which is which is a real, real plus. It's a good thing, okay? Okay. But make sure you understand, you know, what data you actually need so that life plan can be a tool for you. Yep. In other words, I, I don't have, I, I, like today when I mentioned, I don't know what people are buying, you know, with respect to the, the barbecue food. I know what they're I know what they're, I know what, I know how much money they're spending, but I don't know what they're buying. I right. need to know what they're buying, okay? Mm -hmm. I plan to help, you know, help me, you know, get a better handle on, on, on projections. Yep. Because projections aren't just selling money, you're selling a product. 
Right. Yes. You know what that product is precisely, not yep. just maybe. So, Chef, one thing I want to share with you mm -hmm. uh, before we end the call is, can you see this? No. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> it's, like, it's actually a white sheet of paper. Oh, okay. And, and a pen. <laughs> right. So, the first thing is mm. sit and list all of the products you have sold in the past. Okay. So, whatever those dinners are or whatever that, just write them down on a white sheet of paper. Okay. And then how much did you charge for it? Okay. So before we get into live plan, because live plan will ask for all these numbers and it'll kind of confuse you. Mm -hmm. Just take a white sheet of paper and a pen and sit down and say, okay, these are my products. This is how much I charge for them. Mm -hmm. And then to figure out how much it costs to actually make. And just do that for each product. Okay. Because then you'll be able to go into live plan and you'll be able to do projections. So after you see the balance and say, okay, basically, if I have a dinner and my dinner is $12 or $15 or whatever, right. how many dinners do I need to sell in order to even break even? So I mm -hmm. might need to only sell two or 20 or whatever, but the only way you're going to figure that out is actually the name of the dinner, the cost of the dinner, and how much it actually costs to make the dinner. And okay. figure that out because bottom line, you want to make a profit. So the question is how many dinners or how many catering events or how many whatevers you got to sell, how much of that do you have to do per person? in order to get to the number that you want so that then you have money after expenses. Right. So, but that's only gonna happen, get a white sheet of paper and a pen and don't even look at live plan right now. Just write everything like Ray say, mm -hmm. put it in a format or either just line item. So you get a sheet of paper and your eye line item should look like this. How much it costs, how much did it cost to make? And then that's how you're going to figure out what your gross margin is. Okay. Then when you go to live plan, you'll actually have numbers to put into live plan so that then all of this can work together. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That that really helps because it's like I, I have everything for live plan ready, but then it's like my numbers or the financial piece to my business plan is not there. Yeah. yeah. So okay. just start with the yeah. your list of products okay how much you're charging how much did it cost to make it so okay. that that means you got to really break down the cost of each product and then figure out if you're making money or breaking even or you're losing money and do that for each each piece each each one of those line items you got to okay. do it for each cuz every product's going to be different and okay. then you can actually include, like I said, as you pivot and know who your target audience is, mm -hmm. I, just from what I'm seeing, people are trying to figure out what they're going to do for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. so some people are getting their families together virtually. <laughs> and so they're actually doing the dinner together, but it's online. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, uh, there's a lot of room or promotion and what you could really do based upon your capacity because you could actually have some different products and services where people can actually uh, utilize your services and they don't have to cook right but they would have to pay for that mm -hmm. so all right that's my last two cents <laughs> all right <laughs> thank you we kept you long enough tonight yeah i'm sorry Ray. Okay, so, so um, I, I hate to say something new, but there, there's just something that I think is very relevant as we start talking about projections and we start talking about profits, okay? Like in the, like in the example with the barbecue business, okay? You know, I, I said, well, the, the barbecue business is making $4,000 a month, all right? Right. Uh, all right, that, that, that's great, but, but in essence... We don't, you know, I don't know what the chef's really needs are for her own, for her own uh, uh, body 
these tone factors. So, so in essence, you need to think about, okay, the profit on my business is $4,000, but I haven't taken anything out of myself. And then you just need to consider when you're thinking about that, okay, how much time have I put in? If you're putting in 100, 100 hours a week, okay, that maybe you're not doing things. You need help, and you need, you need to do things more efficiently. You know, you find out that you're, you're working a dollar, you're making a dollar fifty an hour. That that you know that, 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 that that's a tough way to go. And so you just want to realize that your time is valuable. Your time is money. Okay. So when you think about how much time it takes, or how much money it costs the types of labor, think about as Kamara said before. Think about your own labor. Right. Let's clean yourself. Yes. Yeah. Don't forget to pay yourself. Okay. In fact, it should be on the top of the list. <laughs> so all the lists, make sure you're putting in, even like with Rodney and whoever else is still online, make sure you include yourself in the salary. Now you may, you know, people will include themselves, but you got to include that in the cost, even mm -hmm. if you don't use it. <laughs> but you still need to include yourself in the cost of labor because you are labor. Okay. And so you out what your cost is you got to figure out the value of your cost of you you know and that should be included in your projections because then you can really see then if you're really making a profit or not okay. you know so well, don't include yourself because that's how many businesses burn out they don't pay themselves they don't include themselves and then they get tired and, you know, the real number that you're looking for might not be the real number because you haven't included yourself. So make sure you are in the labor. Right. So it might not be the full amount that you want, mm -hmm. but include yourself in the labor. Okay. And I have one quick, one more quick question. Yep. Um, in regards to live plan, and I saw like doing the financial piece um, underneath where it says, um, personnel or no it's under direct costs mm -hmm. and it says direct costs and direct labor I was kind of confused on that I was wondering is my business really considered either a direct cost or a direct labor because I mean it's not I mean it is kind of like per hour but then not really and then like it's not billable hours mm -hmm. but then at the same time I'm like creating something like so that's what i was getting confused that yeah so if you're actually you know you have just people you're kind of mm -hmm. like uh with the barbecue lady mm -hmm. she just has part-time labor okay. just some direct labor that she may have one person one day mm -hmm. and then two days later because it rained she didn't have the person mm -hmm. so you can calculate then your direct cost these are cost direct labor because they're consultants maybe more just contract people whereas if you are yourself is direct labor that means you are paying yourself every month so okay. you are on your salary or you're the you're oh on the hi team, this, as um, our staff this so is you, for you. oh so it's chef nelly yes all right so direct costs are those associated with the project so if yeah. you are directly mm. uh, working with you know doing the business doing everything that's a direct cost yeah okay you know indirect costs would be something that's not you know something that is not necessarily directed with what you're doing for this this service okay Okay, any other questions? Any other thoughts? Definitely, as you guys are working on your live plan and all that, you can always reach out to us uh, to do one-on-ones and help you through the process so that as you're going through live plan, if you need us on the line with you, so as you're getting questions, we can go through live plan with you so that okay. you don't have to try to figure this out on your own. Uh, just set up a time. Uh, a few of you, I I will actually do the Ibis world. So if you want me to do a search on your industry, uh, I can do an Ibis world, uh, you know, with a, uh, you know, the research 
uh, sometimes it's very detailed. So we, you know, we don't want to make you confused about it. But if you want that detail to see what the industry is doing and what the industry uh, costs are, then definitely I can uh, do that for you. In fact, just put in the chat so I'll remember and just say, yes, I need research on catering. Yes, I need research on music production. Yes, I need research on uh, Airbnb. Yes, I need research. So put that into the um, actual chat because then I can pull that when I recall the recording and actually look that up and do the research for you through that that software and actually email it to you and then you can read through it uh and see what other people are doing in your industry okay um, real quick one yes uh-huh um i started entering my um components for my business plan into live plan yep. the, th the things that really stuck out to me was the milestones i put my team i haven't put all description um uh my products and services Mm -hmm. And let me see, that's and a few other things, but that those milestones, those types of things, really good because I start these like my LLC, my yep. hard launch, I mean my soft launch, this thing. So I'm I'm getting the feel for, it, but it 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 makes you think of things that you might not have thought of. Yeah, really organized. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of getting in there. Okay, great. Thanks, Rodney. All right, so any other questions, thoughts, or anything? Uh, we went over just a little bit, but I think it was important. Add to this. I think you called it Ibis World. Ibis World. It's I S B I S World. Mm -hmm. And so it's a software that is available through the SBDC. Normally, if you did Ibis World on your own, it would be about, about five to $10,000. So for what, subscription. <laughs> would it be based off my next codes or, or? Well, I can do your next codes and actually go in. I, I can do it by category or I can do your NACI codes. And it'll pull up then all the different types of industries. And yeah. based upon that industry, I can pull a report for you. Okay. Because, yeah, when he said load up the benchmarks, I had actually put my, my next codes in. Okay benchmarks and it's i actually got a couple so would i do more more than one or would i just do one upon the lot you can do as many next next codes you want to get the ones that are really close to you so that then you don't um have a whole bunch of reports you want to try to get as close as possible when you start looking at the industry but yeah we can use the nexi codes and and put produce several reports for you like uh ray was sharing some of these reports are like 25 to 30 pages long so you definitely want to make sure that if you're spending the time looking at the report it's a uh, industry that is very very close to you almost duplicate to you so that you can see what the industry is doing compared to what you plan on doing so that it gives you an idea as far as your fees, what you're charging, and that kind of, it helps you to kind of see what is uh, McDonald's doing compared to what I'm doing, or what is the music industry doing compared to what I'm doing. And it's just to help you get a closer alignment uh, of cost. Uh, but definitely send me any of the codes, the next, next codes that you have, and I can look up and produce those reports for you if they're available and uh, email them to you. So then, then you can actually read through them. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The other thing is that, you know, you can go, you can go to Ibis world yourself and you can look at, you can look at things and you can look out, look at the report. Yeah. And you can actually get uh, kind of like a, a teaser of the report to yep. look at. And, 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 but you can't get the report unless, unless your, your name is tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> it's not going to work. She got a password. And, and uh, so, so the thing, the thing to do is, uh, you know, you, you can actually get, you can actually get some things by just just, you know, getting getting kind of the the, uh, the if you will the the highlight mm -hmm. version of that internet, but it's not the complete report. Right. So that'll give you 
Yeah, and it, and it's more of a marketing. So it is where it'll give you kind of a one page or overview about your industry, and you get all involved with it, and you're like, wow, this is really good, and you click, and it says, okay, pay for this membership if you want more information. <laughs> so that that's pretty much, you know, you can see a brief summary. But if you really want to get detail from Ibis World, and it's just like with Live Plan, you have the opportunity. A Live Plan is showing you some benchmarks and showing you some information. But with uh, Ibis World, it'll actually highlight some of your major players. So it'll highlight if it's a restaurant, it'll highlight uh, Burger King, Wendy's, McDonald's, you know, the big players. It'll actually name them and you can see how much money they're making okay so the smaller you are the less details you're going to get um so just know when you're doing industry research reports they're really targeting and giving you information about the big names uh and not necessarily the small ones because that's data that is really hard to collect so you're just using this as a range just to give you an idea of where you are with the rest of the competition, okay? All right, great. Thank you for hanging out uh, for an extra 30 or so minutes. Uh, hope that you guys can kind of take this time and actually, um, you know, go through again our assignments and whatever. Uh, you don't forget the content library. We got some stuff out there. Hopefully you guys can get on that Google that's talking about how to sell online this year. Uh, I think that's going to be a benefit. So make sure you look at that. And then um, we'll see you back here Thursday evening. Okay. All right. Have a great night. Talk to you later. All righty. Bye-bye.